This tennis pro's win is a lesson in showing yourself some love. Naomi Osaka, now the top-ranked women's tennis player in the world, earned her second Grand Slam title Saturday at the Australian Open. And while Osaka drew praise for showing humility in her post-game remarks, she also fell into the same over-apologizing trap that plagues many working women. Sorry, public speaking isn't really my strong side, so I just hope I can get through this, Osaka, 21, told the crowd. She proceeded to congratulate her opponent, Petra Kvitova, extend gratitude to fans and tournament staff for showing up in the heat, and thank her own team for its support. I have notes before this, but I still forgot the rest of what I'm supposed to say, she later said with a laugh. Research suggests that while men and women apologize for similar proportions of offenses, women apologize more because they have a lower threshold for what they believe warrants an apology. From my view, women are culturally trained to be pleasing, accommodating and malleable, and there's an urge to not create conflict, added career coach and writer Kathy Caprino. I think saying, I'm sorry, is a part of that. We can cut Osaka some slack, Caprino told Moneyish, after all, she's 21 years old and has trained to be a tennis player, not a public speaker. To be a great public speaker takes experience, takes training, takes coaching, Caprino said. What you don't want to do is apologize beforehand. Because I'm sure she's a very competent speaker, and even if she isn't, we'll forgive her because she's remarkable. Here's how to resist falling into self-deprecation or over-apology in your own work life. Don't say you're sorry when you're not, Caprino said. Instead of prefacing a response with, I'm sorry, this might not be the right answer, try, I think the right answer is this, instead of, I'm sorry, but I don't think I see it that way, try, I have a different take I'd like to share, quit apologizing for disagreeing, having emotions or feeling like you're not good enough, and start saying what you want to say. Clearly and respectfully and calmly, Caprino said. Stop saying you're not good at something, a statement that can both undermine everything you say afterward and sow self-doubt in your own abilities. If you truly have a lack of proficiency and feel the need to point it out, Caprino said, there are other ways to phrase it. Try, I'm in the process of developing my skill in this, or mention that you're new at it or growing in it. Don't get me wrong, we all have areas we have to improve on, Caprino said. But to say, I'm not good enough, is not the energy that's going to help you achieve what you want, practice. If you're giving an important presentation, don't wing it, Caprino said. By either performing a practice run on video or having an honest friend watch you present, she suggested, then, edit out all words that are apologetic, demeaning or lessening your impact. You can also spend a few days watching your language in meetings and writing down what you said immediately afterward, then, write those remarks differently and read them aloud. If you've got a confidence problem, it can help to solicit outside help from someone who can reflect back to you what you really are, Caprino said, like a coach, mentor, sponsor or therapist. Caprino also recommends writing down what she calls, the 20 facts of you, concrete accomplishments you're most proud of, fleshed out with measurable, irrefutable evidence. Once you write the 20 facts of you and you really internalize that there is greatness in you, she said, I believe it begins to shape your language about yourself, see the world with cash color glasses. And a weekly digestive personality finance, features, pop culture and essays. Sign up here.